Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you the complete design flow of FPC HDMI using Jetboard. I will be going through Jetboard HDMI transmitter IC and then a complete Vivado design and SDK application development. So keep watching this video till the end. For more information, check the description below. Vivado project creating steps are same as you do usually. So I have skipped all these steps here in this video. However, for those who are beginners, you can check the following video link for complete steps. Remember that in this video, we need to select Jetboard. We will need to add the following IP blocks from IP catalog into workspace. Let's add them quickly. Let's do customization of Zing PS block. We do not need a much customization for the current design. We can go to run block automation. Let's customize TPZ. This will form the virtual stream source. Here we will only have to enable this option. This makes the TPZ block able to generate video stream in YUV color format. Let's customize access to video IP. Here we only do two customizations. We need to set a video format YUV422. And finally, we need to set the independent clock mode. Let's do VTC customization. Let's disable XC for light interface because we want to run this IP with our software programming. And similarly, disable enable detection because we only need to generate the video timing for displaying the stream. Okay, let's set the video mode 1080p so that IP will generate the timing for 1080p resolutions only. Let's do customization in clocking which are IP. We set our clock value to 148.5 MHz for both the XS stream and pixel clock. For simplicity, I'm using the same clock for both the stream and pixel. Okay, let's uncheck, reset, and lock options. Okay, finally, we have here XE I2C for I2C communication protocol implementation in FPGA. The SDMA TX IC will be programmed to this IP. We don't need any customization for this IP for our current design. Okay, now let's do the connection. Let's first connect all the XC4 stream interfaces. Let's now connect all the access stream clock. Let's connect the pixel clock. Let's also connect the BTC timing output. As the video timing generation is enabled by access to video out IP for synchronization, we need to connect this pin from this IP to BTC pin. Finally, connect clocking wizard input clock pin to this Zinc PSIP output clock pin. Let's regenerate the layout. Okay, this completes the major IP block connection. Now we need to connect the XE light interface with Zinc PS. We can do this by run connection automation. To make a signal connection between FPG and SDMA transmitter IC, we need to make these signals external. Let's make it. Okay, let's rename these ports. We also need to make a pixel clock signal external, for this we create a clock board and connect to the pixel clock. Okay, we have completed the block design. Let's validate the design. Here we get the critical warning. The data width is different between TPG IP and access to video IP. We can ignore this warning for this kind of design only. If you don't want to ignore this warning, then you can use subset converter IP like shown here. Okay, revalidate the design. Okay, warning gone. Let's move to constraint mapping. As we create the external port, we need to map the constraints to them. Let's create a constraint file. We can find the Jetboard master constraint file from the Dizzyland GitHub page. Okay, let's copy only the Jetboard SDMI constraint and paste into this recently created VBAR constraint file. Let's change the name according to the design port name. We also need to add IV standard for these pins in the constraint file.
okay, we have fulfilled all the requirements. Now let's create SDL wrapper. And now we can move on to generate the bitstream. Once the bitstream generation completes, we export hardware, which is known as .xsf file. Finally, we come to SDK application development. Here I have already created the project and written the code. We have the most basic pipeline design so that the coding will be shorter and simpler. In our hardware design, we have only two programmable parts. They are Xilinx Video Test Pattern Generator IP and XCI2C IP. So we will only focus on coding these IPs. As we go through main function, in the first part, we initialize and configure the TPC block to generate color bar video streams at 1080p resolution with YUV422 color format. In the second part, we configure SDMI output interface. We program the ADB7511 SDMI transmitter IC by writing the values to its register. These are the register values we need to program. For this, we initialize and configure the I2C block and then write the register values. We can verify register programming by reading the register value back. Here, I have added comparison and print statements for displaying the register verification messages in the UR terminal. Now, this completes our coding. Okay, let's build the project. Let's run the design by run configuration. Meanwhile, let's also open the UR terminal. Okay, we got the UR information. The register programming is good as we are getting the register values correctly. Okay, let's check the body status and the output. This means we are successfully able to use the Zboard SDMI interface and get our video output. For the complete source code and the other information, check the links in the description below. This design presented you with the fundamental FPGA design to work with SDMI 1.4 standard by interfacing the ADV7511 SDMI transmitter IC. In your custom design, you can replace the TPZ IP with the actual input source. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Meet you in the next video.